Hey gang, it's JC, and this is the Daily Dose for Wednesday, February 2nd, 2011, a combined venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. Click on the top of the page for our various features, like the Wayback Machine and other stuff like that. we got some great old uh, television history up there for you to punch around on. And then along the bottom here, we have our eye candy feature. That changes every day. We did not have a Daily Dose yesterday because I had to leave for work about 5 o'clock in the morning, tried to beat the traffic and uh, try to beat the storm a little bit, which brings us to um, some of the oddest human behavior I think I have witnessed around here in a long time. You know, if you are watching this right now, and if you listen to our radio show every day on the Big 550 KTRS, and if you've been sort of following my career around, <coughs> chances are that, uh, that you get it. You understand what I do and you like it and uh, at the absolute minimum you enjoy the discussion and the information and stuff like that. There, there's a small percentage of really odd people who can't stand me, can't stand anything I do, just re, just find the very uh, thought of my existence repellent, can't understand why I continue to get hired on radio stations in St. Louis and continue to have a flourishing career. I will have been here 27 years this uh, spring and uh, you know radio television print the whole thing most of you the overwhelming percentage of you get it you're actually very nice and uh just sort of get a kick out of what we do every day got that very very small percentage this is one of the most hostile bizarre emails i've gotten in recent history uh and it came to me in six parts yesterday guy didn't give his name they never do the cowards never do um, and this guy sent me his complaint about the inaccuracy of the weather forecast in six parts. A couple of words in the first email, and then another email, a couple more words, a third, a fourth, a fifth, and a sixth until he finally made his point. Um, strangely and inaccurately believing that that would somehow make his point more effectively when all it did and all it would do for anybody was just really irritate the piss out of him. Just unbelievable. And, and again, let's just think about this a little bit. From the minute that this forecast was issued, everybody, every single meteorologist said, you know, and this is going to be a weird one because the difference between people who are going to get only a couple of inches and people who are going to get dumped on maybe two feet is going to be a very narrow thing, and that line is going to move. It's exactly what happened. The line moved, and it's not like they predicted two feet of snow and nobody got two feet of snow, because all you got to do is go about 25 miles to the northwest, and they're still digging out today. And as was forecast by pretty much everybody, the southwestern Illinois area got very little snow, and here in St. Louis, you know, it kept going back and forth. We're going to get dumped on, we're not going to get dumped on. We're going to get dumped on, we're not going to get dumped on. Why? Because meteorology is not an exact science. And the storm, like uh, if you know anything about hurricane coverage, for example, uh, they're almost impossible to predict because the storm, as it's moving in one general direction, it sort of wobbles a little bit. And so it looks like it's going one way and then it's going the other way. And that's the same thing that, you know, any really, really massive low-pressure center does. It sort of wobbles a little bit. It looks like it's going one way. It sort of goes a little that way. It goes a little. So how do you predict something like that? I guess my question is, for the people who are all pissed off about this, I, I, is the suggestion that you wanted the meteorologist, even though they thought there was a possibility that St. Louis could get hit with two feet of snow and a bunch of ice and everything like that, because they weren't 100% sure that that was what was going to happen, is the suggestion that they just should have kept it to themselves and not told us? I mean, is that really what you're saying? Um, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I guess it was, the prediction was for about three inches of snow, and we got like about a foot. So it can go either way. It's not an exact science. And the unbridled hostility, the passive aggressiveness, the anger that I see in some of these emails and texts and things that come into us at the radio station really, really had me wondering about the mental health of a lot of people out there you know it used to be when we were kids that there was like maybe one weird guy in the neighborhood and maybe another one or two families that you weren't exactly 100 percent sure about but you weren't you didn't really know and now you have the internet and you have email and texts and things like that where people can hide behind phony screen names and really 
you know, unload on people oftentimes who don't deserve it, or oftentimes are just the bearer of bad news, or, man, I'm telling you. And people are so highly critical of the fact that I am um, on the air every day, and I call it the way I see it. And there's a big difference between being an experienced commentator who backs up his complaints, if you will, with facts and with physical trace evidence. Big difference between that and somebody who's just a whining little baby. And you ask them, you know, somebody, oh, that sucks. Well, why does it suck? Because it's terrible. Why is it terrible? Because it stinks. Why does it stink? Because it's awful. That's the sort of stuff you get. Hi. Katie Kirk was photographed in a bikini while vacationing in Miami over the weekend. And let me just tell you something. Her ratings aren't the only things that are sagging. Camille Grammer, Kelsey Grammer's soon-to-be ex-wife, said that she and Kelsey had a sexless marriage. Well, see, celebrities just are like us after all, huh? All right, AskMen.com for the 11th year has put out uh, no, that's not right. 11 years, 10 year for 10 years. They put out this uh, poll of the 99 most desirable women in the world. Number one this year, Blake Lively. You're serious. I don't even think this girl's cute. Mila Kunis at number two. Sofia Vergara at number three. I think we know what's going on there. Uh, number four, Salida Ebanks. Never heard of her. Miranda Kerr at number five. Cheryl Cole, British singer at the number six. Scarlett Johansson, Katy Perry, Anne Hathaway, and Mad Men actress Jessica Pear or Pere. I don't know. Katy Perry. Yeah, we just, you want to look at eye candy from a couple of weeks ago and see her without her makeup on? It's there. You tell me how glamorous she is. 70 of the 99 women on the list have dark hair. That's encouraging. 27 blondes, two redheads. Of course, Christina Hendricks from Mad Men is on that list. This is the 10th year that AskMen.com has done its most desirable list, and only three women have made it every single year that they've done it. Want to know who they are? This year, at number 67, Angelina Jolie. I seem to remember just like a couple of weeks ago, a whole bunch of polls telling me that she was the most glamorous, attractive, desirable woman in the world. Giselle Bunchen at number 34 and Beyonce at number 23. They're, those are the only women who made it every year that they have done the thing. Charlie Sheen, going to do his rehab at home. Hmm, probably just about as effective as Kirstie Alley doing her dieting in the kitchen. Apparently the Betty White juggernaut was not just a fluke. It wasn't a flash in the pan. The other night, she's on the, what, what, what was this? It was on CBS and CBS with uh, Jennifer Love Hewitt on this uh, movie called The Lost Valentine, 14 and a half million people watched this thing. It was the most uh, watched Hall of, Hallmark Hall of Fame movie in four years. It's unbelievable. Um, in the February 17th issue of Rolling Stone magazine, which is going to be out soon, Elton John is publicly outing Billy Joel as an alcoholic. So these guys went out a half a dozen times as an act, and, uh, and Elton says he knows that Billy Joel is going to be really pissed off about this, but he says it's tough love. When you're getting tough love from Elton John, your life might be a little bit screwed up. This Saturday, it's going to be former Saturday Night Live star Dana Carvey hosting the show. And who's it going to be here? Uh, Russell Brand in two weeks. He's got a movie coming up. Uh, just a reminder, we've got a big Super Bowl show coming up on Friday on the Big 550 KTRS from 10 until 1. This show is maybe not as big in terms of audio clips and themes and comedy bits and everything. Maybe not as big as the opening day baseball show. But you know what? It's getting close. Uh, I had a little exchange with Joe Buck yesterday. Joe's going to be on the show with us on Friday. He'll be calling the game on Fox, like 100 and how many knows million people are going to be watching Joe and Troy Aikman, the recently announced divorce of Troy Aikman. Anyhow, uh, he's going to be with us on Friday's uh, show on the Big 550 KTRS in the 12 o'clock hour. They had terrible weather there. They had snow, wintry mix. A couple of the tents they have at these big Super Bowl parties just collapsed under the ice and snow. And Joe just said it's just awful down there in Dallas. By the way, Sunday, game time temperature about 60 degrees. So it is going to recover. But we've got a big football show coming up on Friday. By the way, some of the, you know, they in Vegas you can bet on anything. And when it comes to the Super Bowl, it gets really bizarre. For example, you can place a bet, actual bet on the length of the national anthem. 
You can bet on Fergie's outfit, and you can bet on how many mentions of Brett Favre there are going to be during the broadcast. It's unbelievable. By the way, Michael Vick has dropped from the most hated person in sports to the second most hated person in sports. Who do you think it is? Who's number one? You think Tiger Woods? No, he's four. Ben Roethlisberger. No! Ben Roethlisberger didn't even make the top ten. I will tell you that Mark McGuire is number eight. Ugh. Number one most hated person in sports, Al Davis, the owner of the Oakland Raiders. Hasn't committed any crimes, but the way he's abused his uh, franchise and its fans makes him the most hated person in sports. And Mark McGuire, can you imagine how happy he is about being the eighth most hated person in sports? Oh, boy. All right, uh, JC's Eye Candy today. Actually, I was going to show this a little bit here. Can you see that? You see that right there? It's actually pretty cool. Yesterday, we ran a picture of some uh, ice coming down off the helmet of the statue, of the museal statue, and then a sign in the background. But these two pictures are a lot better, so you can check that out on JC's Eye Candy. By the way, a lot of the pictures we run on Eye Candy are shot by U UPI International uh, photojournalist here in St. Louis, Bill Greenblatt, and they actually used one of Bill's pictures, one of the ones we we're running on Eye Candy today. They, uh, they ran it on the CBS Evening News and gave him a credit so there's a name in the corner and the whole thing. That was very, very cool. Bill's a great guy, supplies us with some terrific stuff. Very, very happy for his success. And that's JC's Eye Candy. You can check that out. All right, that's it. The Daily Dose for Wednesday, February 2nd. It's Groundhog Day. Okay, I didn't make any Groundhog Day jokes, so didn't mention the movie. Didn't uh, mention Sonny and Cher. I got you, babe. Oh, I guess I just did. Uh, hey, look, I'm going to go away now. Talk to you today on the Big 550 KTRS and every day, Monday through Friday, along with Trish Gazelle. Trish's Trash is back with us. That's uh, at 1250, 1250 every afternoon on the Big 550 KTRS. In the meantime, we've beaten this one to death. Have a good one. See you later. Bye. Bye.